Now back to the latest on the apparent rift between President Obama and President-elect Donald Trump. Mr. Obama said he would have defeated Donald Trump if he had run for a third term. The president-elect fired back on Twitter, saying, no way. He then tweeted again, saying, quote, the world was gloomy before I won. There was no hope. Now the market is up nearly 10 percent and Christmas spending is over a trillion dollars. John Wagner is the White House reporter for The Washington Post and joins us now. John, what should we make of the latest back and forth after it seemed as if President Obama and President-elect Donald Trump were getting along so well? Well, that, that's certainly right. That it, it has seemed they're getting along pretty well. Uh, Donald Trump has gone out of his way to praise the help that uh, uh, President Obama has offered him during the trans, uh, transition. And, and for the most part, President Obama has, has stayed silent as uh, the president-elect has made a number of controversial statements that he clearly doesn't agree with. I think part of what you're seeing here is just still the, the uh, kind of raw feelings after an election that was uh, uh, so close and so, so thoroughly divided the country. Uh, where you had Hillary Clinton winning the popular vote, but Donald Trump uh, prevailing in the Electoral College. And I think both men just have a lot of pride about uh, what they've done and what, what they are uh, promising to do. You mentioned that pride, and as we go forward here, if President Obama has said that he wants to be respectful of the office and the presidency in speaking about how much he will talk after uh, he leaves office. But there's also been this idea that if he feels it necessary that he would speak out. How outspoken do you expect him to be once he does leave office? It, it's really hard to know. I mean, there has been a tradition, at least in, in recent decades, of uh, presidents leaving office and uh, remaining silent, going to, to their ranch and clearing brush in the case of uh, <laughs> George W. Bush. Um, and, and Obama has indicated that he, he will give uh, Trump some room to, to do his thing, uh, but he won't hesitate to weigh in uh, down the road if he sees fit as a citizen. Uh, but I think it's anyone's guess, to be honest, as to what form that will take. He's, he's certainly a young man by the, the standards of ex-presidents. and. Um, I'm sure he thinks he still has a lot to contribute. Yeah, we saw some earlier tweets by Donald Trump also on Twitter talking about his foundation being forced to close, saying he's been told it can't shut down while it's under investigation. Is this going to be a problem for him as he goes forward? Uh, I think you know the larger questions about potential conflicts of interest, more so in, in with his business uh, interest, uh, will be something that is uh, lingering over the, the early months and perhaps years of his administration. Uh, Democrats certainly aren't going to let go of this issue. Uh, this is a fairly unprecedented situation where you have a president coming in with the kind of business holdings that he does. Uh, the foundation is an interesting issue. It's, it's, it's much smaller in scale in some ways, though, than, than these other questions. And the New York Attorney General has indicated, though, that he's not going to let the foundation close until he finishes his investigation. Uh, it's not a criminal investigation. There could be some civil penalties, uh, which still is, is fairly embarrassing for a sitting president. You know, we've heard before from people in the Trump administration not to take his tweets at face value. And then at times, to listen to those tweets. Have we gotten any better sense of when to take those tweets at face value and when to sort of turn the other cheek? Um, I'm not sure we have. You know, there was an interesting case uh, at the end of last week when uh, the president-elect uh, tweeted about you know the nuclear, uh, the expansion of the nuclear arsenal, and you know his advisors all scrambled and got on TV and were trying to explain what he meant and sometimes contradicting one another, and so I think you know that's going to have to play out, and uh, it, it's still an open question if he'll tweet as much as he, he does uh, once he's president, uh, as he has as president-elect. Uh, most of these you know, tend to come at uh, late hours in the night or early hours in the morning when clearly he uh, isn't as heavily staffed. We, we wondered if he would tweet as president-elect the way he had as the candidate, and he has so far, if that's any indication. Let's move ahead to the confirmation hearings for Trump's cabinet picks. You mentioned conflicts of in interest before as it related to Donald Trump and his business interests, but that's also come up with some of his picks for his cabinet. Some questions, a lot of articles this weekend about Jeff Sessions and his background. What do you think the biggest challenge will be? Well, the Re Republicans do have 52 seats in the Senate, so if they can hold their party together, uh, you know, all of these will, will go through ultimately. Uh, I think the Democrats see some of these battles, including Rex Tillerson for Secretary of State, as an opportunity to have kind of proxy fights on larger issues. Uh, Tillerson's ties to Russia will come up, and that will be a way in. Uh, perhaps to trying to learn more about what the president-elect's you know, true, true uh, views are about 
about Russia and, and uh, Vladimir Putin. John Wagner, White House reporter for The Washington Post. Thank you, John. Thanks so much.